Okay. Well, why don't we get started, guys? Um, this is our final panel discussion for the evening, and then we'll have some drinks uh, for, for the rest of the night. Uh, I'm just going to have the folks here kind of introduce themselves, maybe uh, how long you've been back in Vietnam uh, and what you do currently. So, uh, Tung, why don't we start with you? Uh, hi, I'm Tuan. I'm a creative director at a creative company called The Lab. Uh, we do everything from branding to interior architecture to communications. We also invest into lifestyle businesses, uh, uh, pastry shops, uh, cafes, bars, things like that. And I've been back here uh, 13 years, two-year break, so uh, in total 11 years. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Kung Dang, and I've been back in Vietnam for five years. I'm an entrepreneur, struggling entrepreneur. So move from one thing to the other. So I'm still learning throughout this whole journey. Uh, currently, I run Forbes in Vietnam. I'm in media. Very good. Thank you, Gung. Uh, Zoom, on to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Zoom. Um, I was born in Hanoi, and I was booking one-way ticket, come back home from Japan more than three years ago, directly coming here, Ho Chi Minh City. Instead of transiting uh, in Hanoi, I uh, fly directly from Tokyo, Japan uh, to come back home, come back here, Ho Chi Minh City, and establishing our very first uh, representative office of uh, early stage venture fund, Genesia Venture. Uh, we focus on early stage investment in startup in Vietnam. So far, we have invested in more than 10 startups in Vietnam, including Vietcetera. I'm very looking forward to talking and exchange a lot of information today with you guys. Thank you so much. All right, Calvin. Thank you, Zoom. Yeah. Uh, good evening. My name is Calvin. I've been in Vietnam for 16 years. I was born in uh, Ho Chi Minh City. I was born in Chia Leng, a part of the wave of the uh, Bo people. And, uh, and I decided to relocate to Vietnam in 2006. My daytime job is in fashion, where we design, manufacture, distribute underwear. You probably know my name, my brand, iBasic. And my uh, evening job is uh, invest. I invest into a portfolio of uh, long-term company as well as uh, lifestyle company. Very good. Uh, we've caught quite the diverse panel here, guys. And how we're going to structure this panel is a bit of a fireside, well, not fireside, but uh, Quick fire questions. I know there's four of them here, so we want to. You just want me to oh, yes. close that I'm an angel investor in etc. Oh, yes, that, that too. Oh, so we have two investors of etc. on stage here. Take the disclaimer. Yes. Um, you know, I'll, I'll kind of start there. You know, I, I'm, I'll, I'll add my story too, just a little quick, quick bit. I'm here for almost seven years, and it took seven years to build uh, a community that's quite rich and valuable now. And I think the four of them here can also share that. Take some time to build that community. It doesn't come right away. Um, but yeah, I found two investors along the way. So um, we're going to start with Calvin. Again, quick fire questions, guys. Um, if there's one thing you wish you knew before coming back, what would it be? So if I, have, uh, if I were to do it uh, over again, uh, one thing I've done it differently is to learn Vietnam on somebody else's dime, the way Wang has in mind. So you basically get a job, uh, a meaningful one, of course, and basically on, on the uh, major corporation's time, to, it, it does take the, the reality, it takes a long time to reestablish our own route, learn the local culture, which we all need to respect and, 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 and invest the time, build up the network, and learn the local way of doing business. It's not better, it's not worse, it's different. So if I were to do it all differently, I would learn it on other people's time as opposed to my yeah. own time. That, that's an important lesson, and I, I share the same kind of uh, feedback. I think Guang from OV would probably say the same thing. If you're able to get a job here and you're determined to come to Vietnam, that's probably the easiest and less risky way to do it. You'll probably be compensated pretty fairly, recognized for your skills, obviously, and uh, learn along the way. Uh, and, I did not do that. <laughs> yeah, and all corporation that you work in has a good structure in place of people, process, and supplier, and those are your network. You can get started immediately. 
Okay. Good tip, Calvin. Uh, Zoom over to you as well. Um, you moved from Japan. You spent a long time over there. You speak Japanese as well. Uh, what's thing, one thing you wish you did uh, or wish you knew or did differently um, before coming to Vietnam? Yeah. Before, when moving, yeah. That's a very <laughs> difficult question, actually, because um, when I look back to my journey more than three years ago, I was uh, have, at that time, I had really fighting spirit coming back to Vietnam. I want to become the winner in Vietnam as a, one of the best venture capitalists in Vietnam, and I was so working so hard at that time. Coming back to Vietnam, I go, I went to every single cities, streets and supermarket and markets in, in Vietnam to find out what is the issue, what is the opportunity behind the issue. And I was spending a lot of time speaking, talking uh, with the entrepreneurs in Vietnam to find out what is the right opportunity for us to invest. So the point here is that I was working so hard so that I don't want to ask me such kind of question, actually. Mm -hmm. I always find out I was working so, try my best to bring out the best output when uh, I, I staying here in Vietnam. So I believe that I still remember one of the question, uh, I guess you asked before, right? When you come back to Vietnam, you find out that you, was so, so struggling to fit in the working environment in Vietnam, um, persistent, consistent, working hard, and try to jump into not just lean in, but you need to deep dive further into um, the, the surrounding, the environment here in Vietnam, talk with a lot of people, get to know everyone, to find out any potential issue, opportunity for you to contribute, to make yourself so valuable so that people can ignore you. That is the most important thing when you um, prepare essential things coming back to Vietnam. Very good. Finding your place, providing value. I would have to agree. Good. Um, you've done a couple things in Vietnam. Your Forbes is now your thing, struggling but growing. Uh, what's that one thing you would have wished to know more about before or during the first couple months that you got here? Um, I think my biggest thing is um, I wish that I came back a lot earlier. When I left Vietnam, that was 20 years ago, the country wasn't like this. In the early 2000s, uh, when Clinton arrived, um, set the boundaries and the, the, I guess the the beginning of economic growth in Vietnam in the mid 2000s. And um, I wish that I would continue monitor and reading, monitoring and reading about the economic growth and the opportunities in Vietnam. Then I would have made an informed decision to come back earlier. Um, I was born and raised here, so coming back makes sense. Um, our parents' generations, they moved after the war, they moved to different continents for economic opportunities, whereas I think younger generations today, whether you were born in a foreign country or you were born here, Southeast Asia and Vietnam has the fastest growing economic rate in the entire world. And this is where economic opportunities is compared to others. So, All right, come earlier. How much earlier? <laughs> Never left, maybe? <laughs> Hard to say. Well, thank you, Kung. Juan, uh, over to you. You've been here, you know, 11, 13 years. Um, what, what, what's your take on this? First, I think uh, the real reason how brought me on this panel, because he knew I would be the least well-dressed person on this panel. <laughs> I'm so underdressed. Um, I think I wish I wasn't so arrogant coming back here. Like when I came back here in 2010 and then later in 2013, I felt like everything I had to bring back had value to people here. When I wish I should have learned what was valuable. So basically, you know, I brought back, okay, design stuff that I think I liked, coffee that I think we like, um, you know, communication style that I think would be effective. But instead, I should have just like, okay, get, um, get here, learn, 
uh, see what people actually needed and then provide those. Um, and then I may not have had to close the first business. Yeah. You had to close your first business. Yeah, yeah, you know, work cycle. Oh, work, yeah, right, yeah. right, right. Okay. Let's talk about, um, you know, the overseas Vietnamese in this audience and, and outside too. By the way, we're recording everything, so we're going to be putting it on media after. Um, those that are considering following the paths you took, we have quite the range here. Calvin started investing here, uh, even opening a factory. We have Zoom, who works in venture capital, uh, came with a, a reputable firm. Gung, doing a few things, including his own businesses. Uh, Juan, you started a cafe. Uh, <laughs> Do you recommend? Let's start with you. Do you recommend starting a cafe for those overseas Vietnamese? What's? Do you recommend uh, they take the same path? Um, I mean, a cafe is a great way to meet people, right? So we met one of our like earliest clients in our now biggest business um, through the cafe. He was just a client, right? Actually, the ex CEO of AIA. Um, they were a client in the cafe. They liked what we did, and they asked us to do the same for their new customer service center, and that's how we got our start. That's how we built the team and built the company that we have today. So, speaking for myself, I, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't have done anything that's differently. That's a very high customer acquisition cost. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, but for other people, uh, see what you really want to do. I mean, a cafe is not easy, huh? So, you know, if you're well off and you want a lifestyle business, sure, a cafe is great. But if you're thinking a cafe would make you a lot of money, like you might need to do a little bit more research, right? Okay. Um, going over to you, um, you know, before Forbes, you, uh, you know, I guess you had two things, right? You had enterprise, rent a car, the, you brought the franchise over to Southeast Asia, including Vietnam. Uh, but you also kind of dabbled and experimented into craft beer. Um, let's, take, let's take the craft beer example. It's a little more fun. Who doesn't like beer? Uh, would you recommend or maybe some insight into what OVs could think about when starting their businesses here? So, um, like, like Tuang just shared, that when I first moved here, uh, uh, carrying education and knowledge and experience from a much more developed society. So I thought I can bring a lot of contribution to this uh, environment and, and working with people. Craft beer industry um, is an exploding industry in America for many years quite mature at the moment, but craft requires a sense of uh, uh, appreciation of taste, and that taste is acquired. It's not learned from when you were young. But craft beer takes some appreciation of it, and it takes education. In Vietnam, it's quite new. Everybody knows this is a big beer market, 97% of the alcohol consumed consumed here is, is beer and the remaining is, is spirit and wine and so forth. But they consume is for cultural and, and, and lifestyle and, and celebrations, but it's not because of the appreciation of taste. So it takes a long time for the general audience to learn how to appreciate the taste in craft beer. And that's the biggest lesson for me to learn is it takes a lot of money. <laughs> To, to mass market and try to convert and build communities to understand and appreciate that. So no, I wouldn't recommend to go into craft beer. <laughs> but well, I, I think the takeaway there is kind of like, just because you like it and other people around the world like it doesn't mean Vietnam will. And, and one last thing was, I didn't like it when people tell me that I can't do it. And I learned that the hard way. Okay. So. Yeah, it's a big lesson. Um, Zoom over to you. I mean, um, you know, I don't know how many Vietnamese students now work and live in Japan. It must be in the tens of thousands, if not even more at this point. Um, when you went to Japan, you, you probably had in the back of your mind, oh, I'm going to live here. I'm going to work here. You speak Japanese. Uh, obviously, that's not the case now. You, you, you live here. Um, but for the OVs that, you know, are thinking of, in your case, in, in, the, in the context of Japanese, being a woman as well, working in Vietnam, um, would you recommend that they, they take that path? What were some things they should look out for when moving back here in, in your kind of position? Yeah, that is a great question. Uh, actually, working in the venture capital industry um, and also overall working in Japan is very much different compared to working in Vietnam. 
and even like Philippines, where women are more welcome, better than in Japan. And before joining gen, uh, venture capital firm, I used to work for IBM Japan as a sales representative as well. And as you know, as a sales person, as a foreigner, as a female worker, I was struggling a lot to access to the most essential information to close the deal. So that is, um, actually that is really hard thing. And I also see a lot of female foreigner in Japan quit the job. But um, I believe that if I can overcome it, I can become much more stronger. And just in the within three months of training program at IBM Japan, I was up to a lot of hard working and I tried my best and I became one of the top three best top sales uh, at IBM Japan in that generation uh, at that time. And, um, and, a lot of, and I keep asking a lot of questions why they evaluate me, even I'm a female and I'm a foreigner. Um, how I can convince the customer, especially the very big financial institution in Japan, they, are, they have more than 100 years of traditional experience and they are very hard to convince them. And um, they said to me like, they appreciate the way I show my hard working, my high commitment to, to bring the better uh, product offering for them. And they was impressed about that. So I find out the secret weapon, as, even as a female and as a woman working in Japan, is that if you work hard enough and then we show a proof that you um, can bring a better uh, performance for the team and for the company, they will evaluate you. But it not in the short period of time. It takes you much longer and at least for months and even years to prove that. And then I bring that spirit coming back to Vietnam with a discipline mindset, with a hardworking spirit, highly commitment working in this industry. Actually, venture capital firm also very much similar with sale industry, uh, sale uh, job, which is you need to access the information, which is benefit for your investment activity. And in the circle of the tech startup in Vietnam, as you see, two co-founders visited us a male, right? And a lot of startups in Vietnam whose founders are almost male, female founders in Vietnam are so limited in terms of number. And as a female venture capitalist, how can I access to the information without you know, creating anything that just professional relationship, right? So I need to stay very disciplined and highly committed to bring my value as a venture capitalist, I can support them, not just only the capital, but also a lot of resources to help the company grow. And for sure, it takes a lot of time to convince them to gradually they accept me as the investors and probably bring my name on the cat table. So um, for sure, that, that is a lot, long journey and I need to show a lot of commitment and my discipline my consistent growing in terms of value I can bring on the table to the, uh, my customer, my, my uh, partners, right? my uh, co-founders as well. So just, I guess um, I hope that you guys can, can catch my point here. Uh, I believe that that is a very long, persistent journey. Yeah. You guys might not see it, but he, she's selling to you right now. She wants to invest in your startup. So if you're looking for her... <laughs> Investment, talk to her after. Thank you, Zoom. Uh, Calvin, over to you. You mentioned you want to work on somebody else's dime or learn from. But for those of, that are determined to follow the entrepreneurial path or investment path that you took, and for context, Calvin, uh, fashion company, but has invested in numerous lifestyle businesses, even land and real estate as well. What, what's uh, some tidbits of advice for those that want to start something in Vietnam? Okay. So let's do a quick survey in the room. Uh, so there are three choices. Uh, rank, assess yourself. Uh, are you very, shall I say, entrepreneur? You rate yourself as more entrepreneur than, let's say, corporate track. The second choice would be you're more corporate than entrepreneurial. And, and the third choice is, I don't know. So I want to get a quick survey of the room. Okay, uh, I'm going to repeat it again. Uh, the three choices are more entrepreneurial. The second choices are more corporate. 
And the third choice is, I don't know, I'm still in the process of discovering myself. So let's do a show of hands. Raise your hand, you think you are very entrepreneurial. Okay, so that's about, what, uh, 15%. Raise your hand, you think you're very corporate track minded. Raise your hand. Uh, Calvin in the back. Less. Okay, I, I see Calvin Bowie, the other Calvin. Uh, third one, you're not too sure, you're still on a journey of, uh, of, of discovery. Raise your hand. Oh, the rest that's a lot. Looks like most people are still, I don't know. Okay, Calvin? So, so I want to talk to the entrepreneurs in the room. Uh, the, uh, uh, but I, I want to acknowledge the corporate track. Vietnam, the corporate culture is not very well developed. I think it's still trying to figure out what's going on. You have a very, uh, I, I think to the audience, the, the member that asked a question that spent eight years in Singapore. The base of the country is still very much from the base of government employee, state-owned enterprise. They still make up the big base. Old school. You have another base, which is the locally based company that are very family, uh, very family center, and they're still trying to figure out what's going on. And you have the third group, which is very powerful, which is the multinational. And, uh, but it's still a small group of the three. So, so you don't ha have as developed a corporate structure to lean upon. Are you all with me? So for the corporate-minded people, Vietnam is a difficult place uh, because uh, it's a difficult place. But on the other hand, Vietnam is an amazing place for the entrepreneur, for the aspiring entrepreneur, or for the serial entrepreneur. And the risk-reward is really greatly in the favor of the entrepreneur. Trust me. I've been there, I've done that, I'm still doing it. The risk reward is wonderful. So just for a bit of record, uh, I have, I have uh, experienced starting company, selling company, acquiring company, uh, take company into bankruptcy, acquire company out of bankruptcy. Plus, I have experience as a founding CEO in US, Mexico, China, and Vietnam. I think I have a very broad sense. Currently in my portfolio of uh, 16 companies that's in my active portfolio, this, uh, not counting the one that I have exited. So I think I have a very uh, a, 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 a fair balance perspective. And I spend more years of my life in the USA than I spend years of my life in America. So I, I have the perspective, the entrepreneur risk reward return in Vietnam is so favorable. Uh, so what I'm trying to say is uh, 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 to in the more established society that like Gung mentioned, uh, more mature, the entrepreneur, entrepreneur opportunity are really harder to come by because there's a lot of capital in the system, there's a lot of technology in the system, and there's a lot of talent in the country. Whereas in Vietnam, you, you, don't, have, uh, you don't have a lot of talent on the ground, uh, that's why Robert Waters is actively calling people from into Vietnam, right, Talon? Uh, whereas Vietnam is exporting just low labor, low cost labor, importing talent. Uh, the, the answer is, 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 is there. And we're importing a lot of technology, meaning the people with the know how. So um, my advice is that for those who are on the fence, go ahead and take the leap. Uh, the return is greatly on your favor. You see how he's a very successful entrepreneur. It took him only eight years. Eight <laughs> years in my mind is very short. And he's doing extremely well. Well, Calvin, you know, going to what Gung said earlier, he wished he came earlier to Vietnam. I, you I, you I, have the unique privilege of being here 16 years. So you came here when land was like a dollar per square meter. <laughs> now it's like 10,000. Um, is it too late? Is it too still early? So, uh, uh, by the way, uh, I, I heard your question. You, you, you wish you came back earlier. Uh, how do I say it? My first visit back to Vietnam was 1994. Uh, I, was I, I was, uh, in the technology sector in the USA, and, and President Clinton had just signed the, uh, the Normalization Act. So that year, I flew back. 
I moved, I relocated back in 2006 after I sold my company in 2005. At that time, I wish I came back 10 years earlier. Uh, in, 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 in 1994. So the question to you is, is it too early, is it too late? By the way, there is such a thing as too early. Uh, there was a period in Vietnam, I would say probably 2008 to, 2000, to 2013, there was five years of nothingness. There was five years of nothingness, unless you are in a major corporate, cushy corporate job. So, the, the, you know, they cycle, uh, there is cycle that you have to deal with that is uh, 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 cyclical. Um, uh, the question is, is it too late? I don't think it's too late. I don't think it's too late at all. I think all of us have a, all of us, all human beings have this penchant to look back and say, good old time. Uh, so we kind of relish what's in the past we are kind of struggle about the present and we're kind of unsure about the future. Ten years later, you look back and say, man, this is the good old time. I've been to many cycles in the U.S. I've been to cycle in China. I've been to cycle in Vietnam. I think this is as good as time as any other time. You ask the guy who came back in 2006, he wished he came back in the 90s. And you look at the guy who came back in... Uh, uh, who left in 2002, he wish he came back about 10 years ago. I don't, think, I don't think there's ever a perfect time. I think this is a wonderful time. Very good. Awesome. I love that. Um, I, I want to move it over to Kuhn because you know, I, I posed that question. You wish you came here earlier. I, I, I think uh, I appreciate uh, Calvin's uh, feedback on it. I don't think it is late at the moment, but I think we all have certain stages of life. And like he said, if you focus on corporate or you focus on entrepreneurship, building a startup, is when is the prime time for that industry that you consider still has plentiful uh, opportunities or plentiful or has been quite mature. We don't know just yet. But wishing to come back earlier means that I have time to enjoy Vietnam more and seeing the economic growth for the last 20 years. And, and you're right, and when you talk about the period of 2008 to 2012, 13, was a global crisis of, of uh, the U.S. mortgage meltdown, heavily affected Vietnam, and Vietnam is quite a very, very young country, economically speaking, extremely young. We see the economic uptick in the mid-2000s, and then it slowed down in 2008, stopped for four to five years until 2012, and then... We had a good run for eight years, and we hit by COVID. Now we resume in 2012, and 13 doesn't look so, sorry, 2023 didn't look so exciting. However, go back to, um, I, I like to, to give some, some thoughts to Calvin's perspective on being an entrepreneur of going down the corporate path. Corporate multinational corporations in Vietnam, been around for a long time, they came here, brought in technology, brought in modern practices, brought in investment and capital, yes, they can take the loss. However, Vietnam, recent years, through Forbes, we've done a lot of research, we see Vietnam uh, big corporations. Uh, Forbes does the top 50 publicly listed companies. Companies like Vini Milk, Nuti Food, uh, VinFast, all these companies are growing, or even tech and bank, you see all this major, the head of these CEO, the CEOs, the executives level, a lot of them are quite diversified. A lot of foreigners, some locals, but these companies are seeing that bringing talents, whether it's a returning Vietnamese, VQ, or foreigners to bring in to make their companies not so much a family, a family owned principle anymore, because they know that's not very sustainable. On the other path of startup, yes, opportunities are plentiful, but you only have, you have to see that the, the, the unicorns here, it takes many, many years. You spend an average of seven to 12 years to get to a certain stage of success. And I don't, don't believe in anything you see that's actually success is overnight. So Tung had learned a few things. I learned a few things. Calvin's also, many of us here, we, we, we talk about failure, we talk about success, but success doesn't come overnight, so. Very good. Uh, thank you, Kung. Kung, last question for you. Is it too late to open a cafe? <laughs> Stop Is it too late to open a creative cafe, agency? 
No, I, I think uh, to the point of whether you, I wanted to come back to Vietnam earlier, I think it really depends on what you want to maximize. In my 20s, I wasn't trying to maximize return on land. <laughs> I was trying to live my life, learn, study abroad. I met my wife uh, abroad. So, you know, like I, I would have came back right when I came back. And I'm okay with not catching land at $1 per square meter. <laughs> There's still time. Um, in terms of cafe, why, why cafe? <laughs> Don't open a cafe. That's the short story. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Good enough. Well, that wraps up today's panel, guys. Thank you so much. They'll be here over drinks. So if you'd like to chat with them, please do. Thank you. And uh, join us for the conference of Vietnam Innovator Summit on the 18th. Thank you so much. <laughs>